Let's get straight to the point. Number eight, the goldfish memory effect. You walked into the kitchen and immediately forgot why. Congratulations, you're not losing your mind, you're just too smart for the room. While average brains hoard useless trivia like digital pack rats clinging to every license plate number they see, a high IQ brain is a ruthless editor. It performs a biological delete-all on the mundane to make expensive storage space for the profound. This is called transience, and researchers at the University of Toronto argue it's the hallmark of a superior intellect. Your brain is actively deciding that the location of your car keys is statistically irrelevant compared to your thoughts on quantum mechanics or geopolitical strategy. Sherlock Holmes treated his brain like an attic, refusing to store useless lumber that clutters up the workspace. So when you forget your partner's birthday but recall the history of the Roman Empire, tell them it's not neglect, it's optimization. You aren't scatterbrained, you are selectively efficient. While everyone else is winning at trivia night, you're busy simulating the universe. Just try to write down where you live, okay? Number 7. The Hermit Protocol If your dream Friday involves canceling plans to sit in silence, you aren't boring. You're likely a genius. While the average person recharges by absorbing the soul energy of others in crowded bars, highly intelligent brains find excessive social interaction exhausting. This phenomenon is known as the Savannah Theory of Happiness. Evolutionary psychologists argue that while our ancestors desperately needed the tribe to survive, modern intellectuals have evolved past the need for validation from Dave in accounting. A study in the British Journal of Psychology found that for people with high IQs, frequent socialization actually leads to lower life satisfaction. Why? Because your brain is occupied running complex simulations and pausing to discuss the weather is a tragic waste of processing power. You aren't antisocial, you are selectively social. You prefer your own company because the conversation is simply higher quality. While society calls you a loner, you're just protecting your prime neural real estate from the depreciation of small talk. Number 6. The Sailor's Vocabulary if you drop F-bombs like commas, don't apologize to grandma just yet. You might be the smartest person at Thanksgiving. Society claims cursing is the crutch of the inarticulate, a sign that your vocabulary bank is bankrupt. That's just a polite lie. The reality is scientifically hilarious. A colorful tongue actually signals a robust lexicon. A 2015 study in language sciences totally debunked the poverty of vocabulary myth. Researchers found that people who could generate the most curse words in 60 seconds were also the ones who could name the most animals and minerals. It turns out swearing is a feature of high verbal fluency, not a bug of stupidity. Your brain isn't failing to find the right word, it's deliberately choosing the one with maximum emotional impact. You possess a rhetorical sniper rifle while everyone else is using a slingshot. Those sentence enhancers aren't crude, they are high-efficiency linguistic tools. So when someone tells you to watch your language, tell them you're just exercising your superior Broca's area. Number 5. The Procrastination Power Move Do you treat deadlines less like rigid laws and more like friendly suggestions? Do you start a major project only when the panic of impending failure physically activates your sweat glands? Congratulations, you aren't a slacker, you are a strategic incubator. Society loves the eager beavers who finish tasks a week early, but science often calls those people unimaginative. Research from Wharton professor Adam Grant reveals that moderate procrastination is actually a key trait of original thinkers and creative geniuses. When you delay a task, you aren't just passively watching videos of hydraulic presses crushing gummy bears, your subconscious is ruthlessly marinating on the problem. This is known as the incubation period. While you explicitly waste time, your brain is testing disparate ideas in the background, waiting for that eureka moment. Leonardo da Vinci spent 16 years on the Mona Lisa. If he had been a productive office drone, she would have been a stick figure finished by Tuesday. You wait because the first idea is usually trash. You need the pressure to force the diamond out of the coal. You aren't lazy. You're just waiting for your genius to ripen. Number 4. The Misophonia Meltdown If the sound of a coworker clicking a pen makes you fantasize about launching them into the sun, you aren't just a grumpy jerk. 
you're a creative powerhouse with a leak. This condition is called misophonia, but scientists at Northwestern University frame it as leaky sensory gating. Most average brains are equipped with a heavy-duty filter that blocks out irrelevant noise like chewing, breathing, or tapping. It's a survival mechanism for the mediocre, allowing them to focus on spreadsheets while ignoring the chaos. Your brain, however, is an unshielded antenna. It refuses to filter out the background because it's terrified of missing a crucial piece of data. This inability to shut out the world is highly correlated with divergent thinking. Marcel Proust lined his walls with cork. Franz Kafka couldn't write if he heard a whisper. You perceive the world at a higher resolution, which is why you can solve complex problems but can't handle soup slurping. You don't have anger issues, you just have a Ferrari engine with no muffler. The next time you snap at a loud chewer, tell them their volume is interfering with your brilliance. Number 3. The Existential Glitch If you lie awake at 3 a.m. wondering if you are just a sim in a decaying server, relax. You aren't crazy, you're just cursed with accuracy. It's called depressive realism, and it's the terrible price tag of a high-spec processor. While the average optimist walks through life wearing rose-colored VR goggles, convinced that everything happens for a reason, your brain is busy running the actuarial tables on human survival and realizing the math doesn't look great. Studies suggest that people with higher IQs are significantly more prone to anxiety and existential dread. Why? Because ignorance really is bliss. To be happy and carefree often requires a certain level of cognitive blindness, a biological ability to ignore the looming precipice. You, unfortunately, see the precipice, calculate its depth, and estimate the terminal velocity of the fall. Your gloominess isn't a personality defect, it's a data processing error caused by having too much RAM. You perceive the complexities, the contradictions, and the sheer absurdity of existence. So when people tell you to cheer up, just smile and nod. They aren't happier because they're enlightened. They're happier because they aren't paying attention. Number 2. The Fantasy Escapist If you spend more time worrying about the political dynamics of Westeros than your own 401k, don't worry. You're not avoiding responsibility. You're engaging in high-level cognitive training. Society often dismisses fiction, especially fantasy and sci-fi, as mere escapism. They think time spent reading about dragons or space empires is a waste, when you could be reading The Wealth of Nations, but they are missing the point. Your brain is simulating reality at a more complex level. Reading narrative fiction is scientifically proven to enhance something called theory of mind, which is your brain's ability to predict and understand the beliefs, desires, and intentions of others. Essentially, every time you dive into a novel, you are performing thousands of complex social simulations. You're navigating political intrigue, emotional contradictions, and character motivations that far exceed the complexity of the average water cooler conversation. The reader of the spreadsheet is good at data entry. The reader of the fantasy epic is good at predicting human behavior. You are essentially a social scientist running a high-fidelity psychological laboratory in your head. So, the next time someone suggests you read something real, tell them you are too busy training your empathy core to prepare for world domination. Number 1. The Imposter Protocol If you have a persistent, nagging feeling that you're about to be exposed as a fraud, that despite all evidence, you are secretly incompetent, you might just be a certified genius. Welcome to imposter syndrome, the uncomfortable hallmark of true intelligence. Society is full of people suffering from the Dunning-Kruger effect. They know nothing, yet they are 100% confident that they know everything. These are the people who constantly volunteer their opinions, loudly and incorrectly. You, the genius, are on the opposite end of the spectrum. You know just how much you don't know. Your vast knowledge base only serves to illuminate the terrifying ocean of information you haven't mastered yet. This leads to profound self-doubt. The smarter you are, the higher you set your own standards, making true success feel perpetually out of reach. Researchers at the University of Texas found that those suffering from imposter syndrome actually performed better academically than their peers. So the next time you feel like a phony who's only succeeded by accident, remember that feeling isn't a sign of fraud. It's proof that you're intelligent enough to measure the terrifying distance between your current knowledge and total mastery. 
If you liked this devastating trip into the reality of your own superiority, don't forget to like the video, share it with an overly confident friend suffering from Dunning-Kruger, and subscribe to Coolest Dude Explains because we drop more verified knowledge bombs every day. Thanks for watching, and try not to forget where you parked.